I want to talk about a big issue in the news this week, the sentencing of Hugh Edwards. This is a man who is uh, being convicted of the, looking at the most depraved child abuse images. Is it right that he is wandering the streets still? It's uh, the opposite of right. It's wrong. It's uh, unacceptable. We've seen compounding evidence now for some time of a two-tier justice system. Uh, the fact is, as you said, use the word depraved. That mm. is precisely the right words. These are the most horrific images um, imaginable. And the fact that he will not serve a day in prison is, is frankly, beyond unacceptable. Uh, Richard Tice, um, our member of parliament, uh, has already uh, written um, about this fact. Uh, and, and, yeah, it's totally unacceptable. Should there be mandatory jail time for anyone convicted of a child abuse sentence? Well, look, what we need is a justice system and a judiciary um, who are willing to mete out punishment appropriate yeah. for the crime. You know, often we resort to saying we need an additional statute in our books, we need new laws, we need more regulation. Uh, actually, what we need is a judiciary willing to uh, apply to, to actually sentence people. There are so many people who essentially get away with serious, serious crimes that warrant meaningful jail time, who never serve a day in jail. And one thing I'd add, you know, we talk about uh, it being unacceptable in this particular instance. When we talk about two-tier, mm. there are people who are going to jail for writing, albeit nasty and awful things, on social media. Yeah. And they're going to jail. Um, so the fact that that's happening uh, is, is while uh, somebody doing these appalling things, committing these depraved crimes are not going to jail, again, is symptomatic of a two-tier justice. Isn't it the problem, though, that there's just not enough jail places and you need to build some prisons? If there, were, if there was capacity, more people could be locked up. Two things can be true at the same time. It's absolutely true that 14 years of catastrophic Tory mismanagement where they exploded the size of the population. This is a good example of the second-order effects of population mm. explosion where, you know, you don't have enough space in prisons. Look, in any large population, you will always have a a small percentage, uh, fractions of a percentage, that are violent criminals, that cannot be rehabilitated, that have to be in jail. Yeah. So if you explode the size of the population and don't build sufficient prisons, and the Tories actually close prisons, astonishingly, um, then all that happens is you have violent criminals wandering the streets and they will commit crime. So that is true. However, the argument that Labour are giving is, oh, well, we have to do this because there isn't enough room in prison, uh, is, is blown away by the fact that, as I said, they're essentially swapping... Mm -hmm. uh, for example, machete-wielding murderers, um, taking them out of jail and putting in people... Well, they're who saying no violent criminals have been, no actual violent false. criminals totally have been false. released. Totally false. So th there's one example, of, as I said, of a, of a man who committed a murder uh, with, um, with a machete. There are plenty of other examples of violent criminals who have been uh, released. And look, you've just seen, was it last week, where a man was released and within minutes of being released had just committed another yeah. um, a, 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 a crime against a woman within minutes of being released in jail. So this sort of catastrophic mismanagement from politicians, from this Westminster elite who are totally out of touch with the British people, has real-life consequences for people. And absolutely, uh, room can absolutely be made for um, Hugh Edwards to, to serve time for his crime. <laughs>